This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you could design this infinite loop icon with a uh, makeshift drop shadow beneath it uh, using Inkscape. And so we'll go ahead and inks open up Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we'll do is set up the page so that we're all working similarly. We'll go to uh, File, Document Properties. We'll set the display units to pixels, PX. We'll uncheck the box that says show border, uh, show page border. Close out of that. And then we'll go to view, make sure we have custom selected. We'll zoom in at one to one. Then open up the align and distribute menu with this button up here. We'll want last selected chosen from this drop down, And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a square. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool and hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I'll take the opacity of that and bring that down roughly in half. And I'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then I want to go to edit and copy. And what I'm going to do now is create a circle. So I'm just going to hold, uh, Control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'll make that red. And then I'll go to edit, paste size, paste size. I'll go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the, uh, the square so we have them both selected. And we'll center it on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. And then we'll click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'm gonna hold control and rotate this around so that the corners are going vertically like that. And now we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is click on this circle and I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And I'm going to click and drag over these. Actually, you know what? First, we'll click on that. We first have to go to, op we have to first have to uh, convert it to a path. So we'll go to path, object to path. And now what we can do is click and drag over these top two nodes and come up here to the far left up here where it says insert new nodes into selected segments. Go ahead and click that. And then just click and drag over that one node there in the middle that we just created. And I'm gonna click this button here that says make selected nodes corner. And uh, I wanna come up here and turn on the snap to cusp nodes. And then I'll take that center node right there and just snap it onto the corner up there like that. And let me zoom in on this so you could get a better view of what I'm doing. To zoom in and out, I'm just holding control and, all, and rolling up the mouse wheel. And once we've snapped it to that corner, I'm going to take this handle right here and snap that to that corner as well. I'll take that handle and snap that in there as well. And I'll just press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Now we go to the select tool, take this black square and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'll take this shape right here. And I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate it clockwise until it's sitting vertically like that. I think that was one, two, three, four, five, six, six steps. And then I'll duplicate that by hitting control D and I'll flip that horizontally with this button up here, flip selected objects horizontally. And I'll just come and snap these, uh, snap these two corners together like that. And then I'll click and drag over both of them. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the uh, color green to give it a green outline. And then I'll click on the X over here to get rid of the fill color. Now what we're going to do is change the size or thickness of this outline. So we'll come over to the stroke style tab. And uh, by default, it sets the units of measurement to millimeters, mm. So I'm just going to change that to pixels. If you notice here, mine set at like 29. I'm going to change that to, uh, I'll change that just to like something like 40. That's a pretty good thickness right there. Uh, you might have to use a different size than me, depending on the monitor you're using and the resolution your screen is. Uh, maybe yours will be 20. Just try to get something that looks somewhat like that. It doesn't have to be precise. What this is basically going to represent, these green lines right here, this is going to represent this white line going inside of it here. So that's what that is. So um, once we've done that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a rounded join up right here, and I'll make this a rounded cap as well. And then I'll go to uh, I'll go to path, stroke to path, and then I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D, and I'll make that red, and then hold Shift on the keyboard 
and click on the color red to give that a red outline. And I'll send those, I'll send the both of those to the bottom by clicking the button right here that says lower selection to the bottom. And I'm gonna make those a little thicker. I'm gonna try maybe like a hundred, see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. Actually, no, maybe not that thick. I'll try 75. 75, that works. And again, we want a rounded corner, a rounded join, and a rounded cap. And I'll convert those to a path by going to path, stroke to path. And then I'll unify them together by going to path, union. And then what I want to do is click on this green shape to the right, and then hold shift and click on this green shape to the right. And we want to unify them both together by going to path, union. And I'll click and drag over both of them, and bring the opacity all the way up. Click off the graphic to deselect everything. And then I'll click on this uh, green shape and I'll just make that white. And then I'll click off the graphic to deselect everything. So what we have to do now is get rid of this segment of the white shape because we're gonna make it look like this side is overlapping the other one. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom in over this. I'm gonna hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can just press B on the keyboard. And snap the cursor onto this bottom corner right here, and click. Snap it onto that corner and click. Then up here, over there, and back to the starting point. So we end up with the shape in there like that. And I'm going to make that green. I'm going to get rid of the, the black outline by holding Shift and clicking the X. And I'll bring the opacity down about in half, like that. Then I'll go to the Select tool. And then I want to zoom out by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And I want to click and drag over everything and click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate it. Grab the bottom right corner and rotate it counterclockwise. One, two, three. Three steps like that so that this portion is going vertically and horizontally perfectly like that. Like we have this little shape in here is now an, an upright square. So that's what we want there. And I'll zoom back in over this. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the little drop shadow here. And to do that, I'm just going to duplicate this green shape. I'll click on that, then I'll hit Control D to duplicate it. And then I'll just click and drag this down here and snap it onto the bottom. And I'll make that black. And uh, I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Click and drag over those bottom two nodes and just hold Control and click and drag them up like that. Maybe about that far. I'll go back to the Select tool. I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll snap this up here. And then we can take this green object and press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. So as you'll see, we now have the drop shadow to make it look like it's uh, overlapping. All we have to do now is punch out this white area. So to do that, I'll go back to the Bezier pen. I'll snap to this corner over here and click. And snap to this corner. And then over here to this inside corner and then over here and back to the starting point. So we end up with a shape like that. And then I'm gonna go to the Select tool. I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll flip that vertically with the button up here that says Flip Selected Objects Vertically. And I'll just take this and snap this onto the opposite side. And then I'll hold Shift, click on the other shape that we just drew so we have them both selected. We'll unify them together by going to Path, Union. Then hold Shift, click on the white object and go to Path, Difference. Now we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click and drag over all of it. Click on it again to get the rotation handles. Just hold control and rotate it around. One, two, three, three steps clockwise. And there you have it. There you have our little infinite loop icon uh, that we created using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.